All right, so now I've got the face frame, what will be the door in clamps. And I only have glue on these two joints. These two are just dry fit and then put in place so that I could clamp against something to get these two corners tight. So I have corner clamps and then I also have my bar clamps that are parallel jaw clamps, I guess, that are holding this direction to keep this piece here, so these two side pieces, tight that way. And then also this piece in the middle here is being clamped on both ends so that I could make sure that these don't try and slip out. So all of that going together, I guess kind of helps keep things square and keep things where they should be. So just going to wait for this to set up a little bit and then I will glue the other end once I don't have to worry about this end moving quite as much. Okay, so what I've got now is the main case of the shadow box along with a piece of oak. I probably could have gone with pine, but I just felt like using oak because it's a little bit harder. And what I'm going to do is use this piece of oak for the French cleat that I'm going to use to hang this thing. The reason I'm going with the French cleat instead of something else is that the two outside edges are about 23-ish on center, 23 and a quarter on center, and obviously that doesn't line up with most US studs. So you'd only be able to hit one, not ideal. So by using a French cleat that allows you to position the two screws wherever you want in the French cleat that's on the wall, as long as you hit two studs you should be fine. I mean, it's not going to be that heavy. So the options with the French cleat are a little bit better than more traditional fasteners, I guess. So what I'm going to do is measure the top here, the inside of the inside, and I have 22 and a half. Yep, so 22 and a half. So I'm going to measure down 22 and a half. From the end, on the right side here, twenty two and a half, and go just ever so slightly under because it doesn't need to be a really tight fit. And then I'm going to mark this out. Next thing that I'm going to do is use my, well, one of my miter saws anyway, to cut that to length so I get a nice 90 degree cut. Perfect. Okay, so now this is cut to length to fit in there. So what I want to do is find somewhere sort of in the middle. So if we've got Just over three and a half, so just over one and three quarters. So let's see. I'm going to go ahead and mark that with a pencil on the end here. So just over one and three quarters. And this isn't 
completely necessary. I mean, you can go however you want. It doesn't actually have to be in the center. I just don't really care to use more of this than I have to. So if that's pretty much in the middle, I'll take that and mark it out here. Oops. And pretty much eyeball the center there. Then I'll take the 45 portion of this and run it right through the middle there. So that's basically where I'm going to be cutting. And what I'm going to do first is get a measurement here. And then I'll run this all the way down on this side. And then I will do the same thing on the other side. All right, so now I have a 45 angle on the end two lines on the edges, or on both faces. So now what I need to do is rip this, which no easy way to do that without using power tools. So we're just gonna have to get after it with a handsaw. <sighs> Workout's done. <laughs> All right, so now these kind of go together. Now I just need to plane them so they match. All right, so I've got these two pieces planed so that they meet pretty well. And the angle really Kind of isn't that important, I guess. I mean, you could have it exactly 45 degrees, you could have it a little over, a little under, it doesn't really matter, as long as you get them to match. So that way, when they go together, they're flush. That's kind of the only important part. So now that I've got those planed up, I just planed them with my 62. So no reason for the low angle on this kind of a grain. It's just that that's one of the few that I have out at the moment. So now that I've gone ahead and planed these both to angle, I'm going to take them and use one of them. I'll use this one, I think, for the one that goes on the case. Okay, so what do we have here? We have some lines, we have a board. We cut the lines with a saw, that's it. So what these are going to be are the pockets. So I'm going to put three screws into the case through this piece. So this will get screwed into the case itself. And these three are going to be cutouts for these little pockets. So we have a square spot that I can actually cut out. So that's what I'm going to do now.
Now we are just going to chop these out. Next up, now that we have those cut out, is drill them out. So what I have is a drill bit that I will be using for my number 10 wood screws that I'll be using to fasten the French cleat to the case. So just have to drill these out, keeping it as straight as you can.